Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Asmodee. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome to the next one of the patch uh, review series today. As you can see, Nachtalp is with me, so obvious we're talking about uh, about Night's Watch. Um, starting with this video today, uh, just a small announcement. We, uh, as you have might might have seen in the intro, uh, now uh, I can I can gratefully and uh, very proud that we have uh, Esmoday as our uh, sponsor. We can have them as a sponsor. So I'm looking forward to to do great things with you, and uh, very. Grateful to have you on board, guys. Um, all right, so here we are, Night's Watch, man. Um, so I let me let me say this before we jump into where this faction comes from in S four. Um, I have to tell all of you that Nachtalp and myself are both Night's Watch main players. Basically, picked it up and played it quite intensively. <laughs> yeah, exactly for the watch, man. So, 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 um, what, what, what happened basically, and just to give you like a small detour, a small time machine, um, we had this meta of, of, um, author conscripts, cross bowmen, some of you remember, uh, which was basically a huge, uh, exploit of the game. No one wanted to play that. Even Night's Watch players at one point said, you know, I, I, I won't play this anymore because it's too frustrating to have that. Um, Jumping into a meta of Corin and a lot of like damage output through like whatever 10 dice, shutting off a unit, just killing it. Um, so that's where we've been in S3. So a pretty good faction, some <laughs> might say too yeah, good yeah, faction. Um, and 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 us two can relate that that Night's Watch had a lot of like cards that can put you out of jail in certain situations that can save a unit that still makes them stronger and stuff so then we got the big bazooka nerf in s4 which basically made the tactic stack you have to choose now right you cannot you have you have two triggers so you have to choose what you what you use you can't do both as before uh the whole cards were a little bit nerfed down um, and they included a panic test. So a panic test, if you fill the panic test, you lose all your vows. And, uh, yeah, we will discuss this in more detail, but this is like basically, um, where, where, uh, or like, like from a time machine perspective, that's what happened. Right. So now let's jump, uh, Thomas, let's jump into where this faction was at S4. What's your view on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as you already said, Chris, uh, uh, before the season four changes, Night's Watch was uh, a bit too strong in uh, in um, yeah in the crater uh, scheme of things, and uh, so they they got the nerf, which was uh, a, a good nerf, I would say, mm. uh, which they needed. Uh, by nerfing Corin and uh, especially the combination of Corin with uh, the old and now's watch has ended yeah. was a huge problem. Uh, it could you could just turn every game around with that if you had the had the cards uh, on the correct unit and then just uh, use Corin's once per game, right? And then the exactly. game was over. So that, that was a real uh, problem for the game. And so uh, it was really good that they changed this interaction. Um, the change to the tactics deck was um, appreciated by a lot of people mm. who don't play Night's Watch. I think most of the Night's Watch players um, yeah, thought that they went a bit over the top with, with some of the nerves of, of the tactics deck. Um, they took out all uh, the all possibilities to do any extra attacks. Uh, yep. Only, only uh, Kotter can do them and uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, John can do his charge over over the the horse, but uh, the 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 normal extra attack uh, from the now watch they got rid of that, right? And uh, they got rid of the extra attacks from the sword, and yeah, left us with a faction that, uh, yeah, although 
it has quite strong units in the seven point um, in the seven point direction, but uh, all the all the old tricks are gone, and a lot of the damage output is gone, and so we are left with a with a faction that has its problems. I would say to yeah. to play really on top. Uh, competitively, yeah, they still are. No, I wouldn't say they are a bad faction or they are no fun at all to play. But um, they had their problems competitively, and uh, Night's Watch doesn't have a real S tier list at the moment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, we will jump into that later. Uh, just yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so, sorry, that, that like to, to to remind those guys out there that don't know, uh, the trigger was basically the old. Um, and now's watch is ended. Could have w was was triggered when you actively killed an NCU even because it said when it when, when a unit dies or a friendly, friendly unit, unit dies. Yeah, when a friendly unit is destroyed. So you could basically put just out both cards and have two attacks just because you actively kill an NCU and this NCU even shut it down a unit. So this yeah, whole sure. like in my, to, like to summarize it I'm totally with you. So in my view, in my personal view and I know this sounds biased and like right as a Night's Watch player but I, but but I think I have a pretty like like pretty good um bird's eye view on the game now and I feel if they would have changed Corin to where he is right now and left the base deck as it was, um, maybe including the triggers that you have to choose, right? That you have to choose, do I use a one-time effect right now with the, mm. with, with the melee, or I attach? I think this, this faction would be in a way better spot. Um, just an example before we jump into S5, really. Like, um, the... Let's, let's just... Um, talk about um as you said and now's watch is ended right and now's watch is ended were were two cards that in especially in the end game were able to when you played right were able to give you the edge in the end to basically get some extra damage out and uh in 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 in, in my point of view they went a little bit over the top because you also you also mentioned for the watch from Jon Snow, which basically gives you a free charge of the horses. Um, mm. But this is still there, but you have to attach it when the unit activates. So you cannot, yeah. so you basically have to telegraph it, right? You have to send it to your opponent. This this unit will be able to charge at one point of the horses. Mm. So, and it, it, and it used to be a card where you can just start of round, right? You start go to uh, start of turn, you put the card out, and you go to horses and just chart off of it, and your and your opponent must must calculate with it. Now he just knows. So, and this is basically one good example where the Night's Watch is right now. They do not have all the shenanigans they used to do, and um, that puts them in a in a not good situation right now competitively. Um, yeah, that summarizes it quite well, I think. So we start with general changes. And we won't talk much about hidden traps, um, but the hidden traps nerf was highly needed for the whole game, but it wasn't really needed for other factions than Free Folk, obviously, because mm. other factions can't spam it as Free Folk can. So especially Benjin was a commander that got pretty viable through the old hidden traps and disrupt on a vanguard for example or what whatever calf unit um so now um they changed it which is important but it does it does only bad for the night's watch right um yeah, yeah. i mean yeah that's it's it's often the case with uh changes like that we saw that with the hardened change for instance or the mm. change to uh, war cry uh, where you had some factions that had an overly good use out of these abilities. Yeah. And so part of the uh, community and maybe playtesters at Simon as well said, oh, that's a bit too strong, we have to uh, tone it back. But then obviously you have the same ability in other factions where it's just fine as it was. Yeah. And they get a small nerf then as well. I I even would say I'm not so... 
I'm not 100 percent sure if it's if it was really so so important to nerf hidden traps. Mm. Um, sure, it was kind of strong in in free folk, but I mean they nerfed Steyr uh, and and other stuff, and so yeah. maybe true. They have just left it as it was, but. Well, it's, yeah, it's good that the, that the game changes and that these uh, meta stuff that we had for like, I don't know, two or three years, that they change uh, stuff like that. And yeah, people have to think about new stuff. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Um, that, that That's what I, what I re really can appreciate about those changes, that it changes a, a full faction like the Free Folk into something else. Yeah. And now, you know, the bear discussion is, you know, it's... Not not here today, but yeah. but but they but they changed something oh, which okay. which changes up the meta and this is good, right? Yeah. So, but but we 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 do not want to talk about too much about Benjin. What's more important is you said um, Night's Watch does not have like an S tier list right now. Mm. I know I know that you played the following list and I played the following list quite intensively, also at mm. uh, Hegemonalia in Poland. Um, so my question now is, Thomas, you as like one one of the one of the best Night's Watch players I know, um, is this list that we played quite a lot in S four, is it still viable with the hidden trips change? Um, how do you see that? Yeah, um, I to uh, in, in short, I would say sure it is still viable. Mm -hmm. um, I mean the hidden traps change is not that super impactful for the list, right? It hurts a little bit because um, sure, with uh, this kind of list, you want to you want to do a lot of uh, chip damage and then finish the enemy with one charge of the Vanguard or one last shot from one Tracker unit. Yeah. And you don't really, uh, you, you cannot uh, like go into uh, extensive melee grinds or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So every chip damage uh, is welcome and helps. But in the end, I mean, uh, the list still works the same as it did before. Yep, sure. And it is still one of the strongest Night's Watch lists out there at the moment, I would say. Yeah, me too. Um, and you, it, it's just, it has some matchups where it gets very, very hard still with this list. And people got used to it more. It was like at the start of season four. Um, People just started playing it very often, the full calf list, before mm. it wasn't played that often. Yeah. Uh, and now people already got used to it. They like our opponents uh, know that we might come with this list. And so, yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> they know it's, what's it's coming. List, but, <laughs> but still, I would say it's it's still not one of these real S tier lists. Uh, it, it, it is a very good A tier list uh, yeah. if you want to talk in these tiers. Yeah. But, um, but the last little edge is missing, I, see, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So, but be, before we jump into the the other changes we got, so the other changes were basically just on the base deck. Uh, before we jump to this base deck, um, I, I and I said that before in another video. I think, especially Night's Watch players, but basically everyone was expecting a little bit more on the commander side of things because that w that was communicated at some point and i think especially on the night's watch i was really i was under the impression they got this huge nerf on the base deck they won't change it back right in in one mm -hmm. season later they won't do this right so that was that was i was certain of it um but i was really expecting some changes maybe on you know Dennis Melister Geor uh, maybe even Cotter, like mm. some to, to see Benzen something. Maybe like the infantry Benjamin. Be, the infantry Benjamin. I so I yeah. was I was really hoping for this to basically negate a little bit what they did to the base deck and then push them up a little, but we mm. didn't get that right. So um, let's see let's see what we mm. get in season six then. But now let's talk about the the buffs we got right because they seem little. Three cards. Three cards. <laughs> so they seem little, but we will make as we as we do as Night's Watch, Night's Watch players. We will fight and kill and and perform as good as we can with what we have, right? So, exactly. so as in the lore. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with Sword in the Darkness. Sword in the Darkness used to be a really strong card, right? Back in the day, because you had both effects, 
and it and uh, um and it used to be a plus plus one die now it's plus one rank so that's big um and also and also the first effect um used to be that a unit becomes vulnerable and panicked if it was not activated so now they changed it and saying each and every unit when you do a melee becomes vulnerable which is mm. good right it's a buff yeah. but it's a really small buff and except of of that that's that's the whole card what i yeah. do what what i do not like about the card still is it got a little better but in my point of view sword swords is a card um that i try to attach as soon as possible but for a lot of units in the night's watch roster it's not really i mean it 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 Everyone can need it. I'm just saying mm. in high need, the only unit that is really highly in need of it might are the Swarm Brothers because they drop from seven to five or maybe the Ranger Hunters. Um, the, these guys are really in, in need of the card. And like I would say, if I get this card early, just throw it out as soon as possible. If you have it in the right mm. situation, you pick it up. I, 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 I'm not so sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, every player plays a bit differently, uh, sure. right? But I, yeah. um, I mean, if you have like the Thorn Brothers or stuff like that, the enemy has maybe a, a ranged unit, and you you ha don't have another card, uh, like a defensive card to put on one of your units, maybe first, uh, then sure go with the sword. But um, like it's very hard to get uh, tokens with night's watch and mm -hmm. i very often kept it to play it in this right moment like in this um last turn first turn moment where you then in the first turn get both tokens uh, for attacking the enemy with the card uh, to to get two tokens uh, vulnerable and panicked on an attack is really strong it's strong yeah but yeah it yeah. was always the problem that you like have to keep the card for that special moment yeah uh, and that mm -hmm. They, they made that better which is not bad you can now use it every like in every round you will attack probably yeah, and you will and, get at least uh, a vulnerable yeah yeah and yeah. you'll get at least a vulnerable but yeah maybe on vanguard or something like that you would rather attach it to stay on your vanguard satellite. swarm brothers they need yeah. it yeah yeah it's it's better than before but um yeah to be real they should have just uh made the the second uh the second effect like the old one again yeah if, if that card uh, still gave you plus one attack just base plus one attack on melee attacks it would uh be a fine card I yeah think. would be a fine card then yeah i yeah. feel so too i mean it's not super bad uh, as it is now with the buff it's okay yeah. Yeah, I think that like what 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 I meant to say is you, as a night watch player, and I basically appreciate that you have not like as a like a brain death deck as it was before, right? You picked up a card and you just threw it out, right? Every time there was a trigger, you just threw it out because you got something out of it. Whatever whatever it was, you got something out of it. So now yeah. you have to choose, right? So I I totally appreciate this from a gaming from a playing perspective. The only thing that I what it does with the Night's Watch deck is if you pick certain cards like swords really early, round one, two, you will you you you, you still won't think about it. You will just drop it out, yeah, right? As soon true. as possible. And this yeah. and, and 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 you probably wouldn't hold hold on to swords no. if you pick it up in one and two. Yeah. And the main reason is because you are definitely fetching for um uh watcher on the wall, right? So because Watcher on the Wall shield is... Shield and Fire. Yeah, she, yeah she, Shield and Fire, obviously, d defensively, but also, like, in terms of offensive cards, you you, you actually want Watcher on the Wall. Mm. Early, early, right? So, basically, I, I would say... Yeah. Drop Watcher, it, again, yeah. Watcher, again, if you play li against something like uh, like uh, Targaryens, mm -hmm. or with dragons or with a lot of cavalry, um, you will want to hold the Watcher in your hand, to mm. be able, they will do the alpha strike sooner or later, and, to, and then you to are able pivot. to react to this with the watcher. Yeah. So in that case, you will keep it on your head. So, so you see uh, what you said there from from a gameplay uh, perspective. This yeah. change that you have to decide between the two effects is that was a good idea. That's a good like, idea. That yeah. Is, yeah. That yeah. wasn't a bad change. Yeah. Yeah. The just overall the deck is a bit too mediocre now. 
Yeah, true. The cards are all like so. Mm, mm, they could all be a little bit better. A little bit stronger no now. Yeah. That has, where you say that has real impact that can like really change a game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's good. Totally. Okay, so let's go to light, the other offensive card, which gives you rerolls, um, but also it gives you plus one to morale. Mm. And now the change is, if this targets your commander's unit and you attach the card, this unit also cannot become panicked. And this mm. one, in certain lists, is quite good, right? Because all, all Night's Watch players can relate that... Um, this combo of you know playing playing against something that has vicious that does a lot of morale tests or gives you intimidating presence whatever mm. this card is really good to at least get that panicked off of your commander especially when it is like a defensive commander we're talking donald Jeor, uh we're talking dennis melister may, may, maybe even Alyssa thorne so maybe may, yeah. commanders that push through the middle and basically are a bunker in itself uh, because what I what I appreciate about Night's Watch is basically all of them can also deal quite some damage out if they need to, but they are also with their units, Spearmen, uh, veterans. They can they can do both, right? Spearmen not so much, but veterans with precision and with the high high amount of dice, they can really do the thing. Uh, so so light, in my point of view, is a probably a bigger change than it reads in certain lists what do you think mm -hmm. yeah for me i mean it's uh, even in season four before the change i it is a, it is good to have rerolls right on an attack often Obviously. but uh, most of the time i actually attach the light yes uh, the in my lists uh, if you have even if you have something like vanguard with the glory seeker you put a light on that Mm. And you bring him uh, in range of a weirwood tree, and there you have a unit with two plus morale yeah. that uh, that uh, does the, uh, auto damage for every panic test it makes. Yeah. So um, I already attach it uh, a lot, and now Me too. I mean to attach it on your commander now is a little bit like a no-brainer, like uh, right? yeah, because the, the the big frustrating thing, and I think they aimed <clears throat> for that with this changes to those cards here uh, as well a little bit. The, the frustrating thing is you have three cards uh, on a unit and it feels a little bit like work now because you have, <laughs> like, you have to uh, do it every turn and then you have these three cards and you have your nice unit and then you yeah. get that stupid panic test where, where you roll the snake eyes, right? And yes. everything is gone. Everything's and gone. And this change here, um, yeah, goes into the direction that it gets a bit uh, easier for you to to get more, uh, more consistency. Yeah in your take the cards and that's a good thing yeah definitely so uh i i i i can't really add anything to this um apart from maybe it always comes down to the game it always comes down to your list to you know to the game situation but through Don through donnell and through um Maybe the Swan Brothers have martial training built in in itself. So Night's Watch mm. can have some rerolls when needed. The crucial ones they can get, right? Off Melissa, of Melissa, NCU. Melissa, exactly. So yeah. they have quite some tools to get the rerolls. So this card is probably something you would attach. Yeah. Um, and now even more. Okay. So now going in my point of view to the to the to the worst change or the least least. Ch like like a change that is not 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 i mean it also comes down to the list but um fire is a card that a lot of times was held in hand for this particular panic test and wasn't attached much because you needed it for that one particular moment when you had the snake eyes right you needed mm -hmm. the fire to 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 keep your vows in there and so yeah, so now the change is you can still reroll, but if this targets your commander's unit, you also pass. And that what makes what I just yeah. said even worse or even more more important to have it in your hand, I would say. So I don't know if you would really attach this card. Yeah. I, I would say you will always keep it. So that's what I meant by changing it won't affect that you really, that you really choose. You would always, when you pick it up, you will just 
hold mm. on to it, right? So, um, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, maybe against uh, Martel lists or um, Baratheon lists, Renly side, which don't have a lot of panic stuff. Yeah. You maybe could, uh, and on the other <clears throat> end, have a lot of token play. Mm. Uh, there you maybe could attach it. Maybe in such yeah. matchups. True. Against um, Oberyn but, can be helpful yeah. and stuff, but yeah. yeah. But but normally, uh, this is the card you yeah. always want to have in your hand. In your um, hand. Uh, yeah. Maybe from round one on to just be, uh, um, or round two on, to just be sure to, to yeah, to just, uh, that you can reroll a, a panic test. Yeah. To not lose all of your stuff and stay in the game and stay relevant. And so you will keep this card in hand most of the time. Yeah. Um, and then there will be these games where you make all your uh, panic tests anyways, and it will just clock your head. But uh, yeah, um, but that happens, but, right? That's, actually, that they yeah. that they brought it in line now with um, things like uh, where's the risk in uh, in the mm. neutral deck, for yeah. instance, yeah. that you have the possibility to auto pass a test, even if it's only on the commander. They could maybe have made it in sick in in short range of the commander unit or something like that, even. But uh, I think that's, I, I wouldn't say huge, but that's actually big that you have the auto pass now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's especially yeah. big. And we will, we will talk about the list we brought, about the tryout yeah. soon, but especially for what, what kind of list you can build now around your commander. So that yeah. can be quite interesting. The only thing I have to mention when I'm looking in the base deck, because I'm not getting tired of telling everyone, I have to, as Randall would say, I have to step on my soapbox now. Like <laughs> lore-wise, I do not appreciate this panic test being in there. Not talking rules, not talking meta, not talking mm. good, bad. Just saying the possibility of like, I, I was always thinking right there, telling their vows to the Warwood Tree. You know, they're in the Night's Watch now and they're getting better with each vow they're basically telling. And you had it made also this faction really unique, right? And now it feels like this this faction is not really unique anymore. It's mm. It used to be unique. And now it's basically like everyone else. And this is something lore-wise I cannot appreciate um, because it takes away a, a lot of character from that faction, lore-wise, right? You, you mean that they, uh, that they lose... That the they lose the vows, they, right? They... they yeah. The tail of vows, strange, right? yeah, they get stronger over time and then they pass or they, they fail one panic test, which, as we all know, happens quite a lot. I mean, I have a lot of games where I only have one, two cards attached, right? Yeah. At, at the same time. And it used to be, which was over the top, obviously, but it used to be like two there, one there, one there, one there, right? So um, that's the thing. But again, yeah, lore-wise, I, I do not appreciate this. Um, Sometimes you have more Martel debuffs on your Night's Watch units than you exactly, <laughs> which it, which feels weird, right? So again, yeah. lore wise, I mean it's a bit strange. Cool. Anyway, if you if you take a vow, right? How how can a whole yeah. unit a whole lose unit lose it? Vow exactly. because yeah, yeah. three guys uh, go uh, running are like running that. away. That's, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. Bit strange, right? But totally strange. Whatever. Again, lore-wise. Okay, so now we brought a list. We brought the Season 5 tryouts fueling what we just said about the changes on the base deck. Yeah. So, Thomas, guide us through this list. Yeah, like uh, in the other videos in this series as well, we, we like tried to tailor the list a little bit around uh, the changes. And, um, yeah, because the, the actually the cards that revolve around panic tests and moral tests got buffed yeah who could be a better commander to test this out the impact of that than Jewa, who, who plays around the moral bear. tests and panic tests yeah right and uh Jewa actually is a commander i i don't really like so much be because i always and i actually just two weeks ago or so i i wrote a <laughs> big rant in in our discord that he's such an inconsistent commander <laughs> Because you you always miss uh, you you have this card in hand that yeah, you want to yeah. play, yeah. and then you you wait for the right moment, yeah. and then you don't make this stupid you fail it. Uh, yeah. uh, moral <laughs> test, right? And everything goes down the drain. Yes. And uh, yeah, now uh, with the changes to the new cards, I thought that makes him a little bit more consistent. Maybe mm -hmm. if you get the light on him, 
early and you maybe have a fire in hand for that auto pass. Uh, the, the biggest problem I had with him, his consistency now is should be a bit better. If, mm -hmm. At least if you get the light early. Yeah. On him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so totally. what uh, did we do here? Uh, we, we have Geoa who has this ability that if he makes a panic test, uh, he can heal or another unit in, uh, in, uh, in short range makes a panic test and th this unit could heal. Uh, so I thought, yeah, let's combine that uh, with a set and a brave recruit. So we have a Dauntless on that unit as well. And we can put the Nowest Watchers ended on a unit for a, another Dauntless, another heal. like yep. that, that yep. will stack. Yep. So every time uh, they will uh, they will make a panic test, they will heal at least two wounds, and you can decide to use the order, heal even more. Yep. So that's the first. Up to five. Up to five if you are on the last rank with your order. <laughs> Uh, only from making one panic test, yeah. right? Uh, and Dauntless tr not only triggers on um, panic, but it also triggers on moral tests. So every time you will uh, use one of Geo's cards that need a moral test, yeah. two of them need a moral test, um, to be uh, so that you can use them. Yeah. So this will trigger the Dauntless as well from Saturn. Yeah. So And then we have this in the unit of veterans. I opted for the veterans because I think they, uh, the, the spearmen obviously are even more tanky, right? And mm. nobody really wants to fight them because you won't do uh, deal much damage to them. But I opted here for the vets because I think they are a bit more flexible uh, through the precision. You mm -hmm. have a precision in the list. You can do at least something against giants or stuff like this. And you can uh, use this unit offensively as well. Yeah. And nobody will uh, want to fight them anyways. Right there, even True. with the four plus uh, defense, that should yeah. be enough. Yeah, disrupt because... and counter strike is heavy, right? On on yeah. on on that unit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and normally the big problem here would be uh, ranged attacks. Enemy would try to uh, fight your veterans with uh, range units, but uh, through the dauntless and uh, you you put weirwoods down. Obviously, if you if you play this list, a lot of them. Um, yeah, <laughs> and and you you will make your panic tests probably. Most Probably, of the time. yeah, and so, um, so yeah, you can just heal off uh, his ranged attacks again, and that shouldn't be the biggest problem, I guess. Exactly, and what I really, what what, what I really like about it, and just to mention it, you see Cold Hands right, right beneath it. Cold Hands is a very not not only because it's a good solo in this particular list, it it fuels really what we're trying to achieve because, as you said, his order, his healing order, I forgot the name, but uh, what what is it? Um, stay at your post, right? Yeah. So stay at your post um, also triggers. So let's just assume someone tries to attack cold hands out of nowhere, like through whatever, a panic test, or there's a spear thrower or, you know, whatever is happening. You can also trigger this off of uh, cold hands because cold hands obviously will stay pretty close to the veterans. To, to have this double disrupt at the right moment, someone charges in and is not aware of this double disrupt and he won't do anything because of the double disrupt and because stand your ground, what Geor brings, yeah. so there no won't be road. any damage. Um, yeah. And you can still heal off of it. So let's say even end game and this unit is down a little, but freed themselves somehow, right? And freed them up. And and then something else, a unit of screamers is trying to to attack you. This can this can this can really be be something to have the double disrupt. They will just stand there and then probably yeah. get eaten in the long run. And you will probably pass your panic, heal back up, and just kill them at some point. Yeah. yeah so that's a cool mechanic or a cool synergy between the two, uh, veterans and cold hands. Yeah. So why the range of vanguard? Yeah. I mean. Um... You could go for a unit of spearmen here as well and just uh, play the I go on two objectives and sit there game. That maybe could work too, but uh, I always like to have more mobility in my lists. And uh, I, th I think that cavalry just in general is very strong in the game. It, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have the glory seeker attachment, which again plays into that whole, I want to make my panic tests and trigger extra effects from that uh, with that list. And because we have uh, the healing from Geoa and from Eamon and from the conscripts, which we will see soon. And from Seven. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can play the Vanguard pretty aggressively. Uh, like yeah. uh, So you can really uh, 
get into the fray with them and uh, work against enemy ranged units, uh, go against enemy landscaf and uh, just intercept them, do stuff like that, hmm. and then back this up with uh, with the conscripts and just heal your your vanguard. Uh, you can put the the Nowis watches ended on them as well, for, yep. so they get dauntless as well. Uh, and as you see, we have Othel in this list too, so you can shoot into melee fights uh, where the Vanguard or the veterans are in and trigger their extra effects again. And you have control over that yourself. You can trigger um, Jeor's ability in your own turn by yep. shooting into melee with Othel. And yeah, that's a lot of small synergies that really work well together if uh, played in the, in the correct way. I yeah, think. and like especially um when you when you play your opponent this list put a lot of or puts a lot of thinking onto your opponent because he always has to the lord varus is a, is a thing um the as you said the stubborn tenacity is a thing that you can shoot in there and get an auto wound that you can shoot into your commander and all that so he really has to think where to put his ncus where to attack where stay engaged where to shoot at also so it puts a lot of like um yeah thinking on your opponent which in other lists are probably not that not that uh hard to think about right um yeah, where to go I mean, and what to attack in this list, it it gets it, it it could go a little bit or it can be a little bit complicated to know what to do exactly against this. I mean, you you will have to protect your conscripts a little bit. Obviously, they yeah. they are basically just a heal battery who will stay uh, behind your your uh, your other units, and some enemies uh, will maybe try to get through to your conscripts somehow. So you you will. Uh, have to protect them, but th that's uh, another uh, thing why I put the, the, the Vanguard in there to have a mm. cavalry to intercept units that maybe yeah. want to go for the conscripts. But if you go like for this turtle uh, move and just put your uh, veterans in the middle and your conscripts can stay behind and just heal, heal, heal all the all day, heal with Eamon, <laughs> uh, then you have pretty good chances, at least in, in three objective game modes, I would say, yeah. to uh, do a lot of interesting stuff with this list. Obviously. You have a lot of sustain, and if your enemy doesn't have enough um, enough focusable damage, then he will, uh, yeah, get big problems to to even have a chance to to fight you. Then. Yeah, yeah. And we also put the conscripts in there because they're not played that much right, that that yeah. much right 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 now in the moment. So let's just say you would. You 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 need to take the list now. Next next tournament you, you you go. You need to take this list. Would you use the conscripts with all that heal, or would you go for a unit of trackers maybe, or would you go for something else? Is there room for anything else than the conscripts with a watch mm. recruiter? Well, I mean, we have the the, the conscripts with watch recruiter are six points. Like obviously, you can always just take trackers. Trackers yeah. are six points are just a really good unit. Yeah. And you can do a lot of interesting stuff with them. You have mm -hmm. another um, possibility then to shoot into melee. You, but then you even could say, if I go for the trackers, then you could even change the vanguard maybe into spearmen. Spearmen. With mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and th and then you can shoot with trackers and also into melees. Or you even then say, now I have a, a ranged option with the trackers, and I go for, let's say Donald or Melister instead mm -hmm. of Ossel. And have a point freed, which I can put in uh, uh, attachment into the yep. trackers and yep. stuff like that. Sounds so valid. there is room to change, but actually the conscripts in this list are not that bad. And with yep. the uh, with the watch recruiter again, you can use their heal more freely on your other units uh, because they will heal back every time you activate. Mm -hmm. And they are not that bad. Right against yeah, yeah. Lannisters, it can be a bit problematic. Yeah. Uh, often they just use crown and subjugation and hear me roar, and your conscripts are gone basically. Yeah, yeah. but against other factions, if you can uh, keep them safe behind your line, then they can be really strong. And uh, the, the heal that will come out of them uh, in combination with Aemon with Varys can be really strong. Yeah, and what I also appreciate about the NCU setup in this list is. Uh, the watch recruiter obviously bring. I, I mean, insight is not that important. I mean, it 
if they are engaged, then you know it. You you did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the 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 reinforcements is is way more important. So what I like about the NCU setup is when uh, reinforcements uh, triggers every time you activate, you heal one, and when you have the crown, you heal two. So yeah. and all of these, no, not all of these. Othel and Amon, both of them, they do not. I mean, they care for the zone, but if there's only the crown, they wouldn't care because they still get their full effect out. Yeah. And um, that's what I also think is really cool about the list. You can just go to Othel, take the crown because, you know, um, maybe your the most appealing zone is gone anyways. So you go to crown, you know you heal too soon, like next moment you heal too maybe, and you shoot, you can, again, trigger off the healing, whatever you do, but you heal back too, and you can still get the full effect out of Amon and Othel. So that's cool, right? Um, yeah. yeah, so that's the list we brought for the Season 5 tryouts. So let us know in the comments below or on the Discord. Jump on the Discord and, you know, talk to us how this list went. I'm pretty sure it goes quite well. Um, so that brings us to the to the last minute or so. So now, Thomas, with all these changes, or not all these changes, with those <laughs> some some little changes, where do you see Night's Watch in S5? I mean, it, it, there there will not be a lot uh, difference to season four, obviously, because yep. the changes are it's only three cards, right? Yeah, uh, small changes, and um, the impact is not that big. Now you could say, yeah, but the cards get bu got buffed, so uh, that's good for Night's Watch. They will have a better time in in season five. But I think that. The other factions, Targaryens, uh, even Lannisters now with the new Castle Rock Honor Guard, um, got some tools yeah. that Just shut it makes in. the time even harder for Night's Watch. Like the the list we, we now saw with Treo and the veterans, uh, bring one unit of Castle Rock Honor Guard, and uh, it's basically all <laughs> gone, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's a bit the problem Night's Watch has at the moment, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Don't, like, don't, don't tell anyone. Only stuff and, uh, and things like that. Yeah. You, you can basically only hope to to do some cheesing with Stone Throw or stuff like that. And mm. even that only works against Martels to be. So it's, I, I think yeah. competitively, everybody who wins a big Our tournament place. in Season 5 with Night's Watch, are my, my biggest respect. Um, they, 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 it will still be able to win tournaments with Night Watch. I yeah. think for experienced players, and if you if you get the right matchups, yeah, um, there is room f uh, for winning. But um, I would not see them in the top three, and not even in the top five. Yeah, to be fair. yeah. The yeah. Night Watch at the moment are a bit on the lower end. Of yeah, this, true. Of this. Nothing to add there. Unfortunately, I can't say anything more positive. But that brings us to the end of the video. And um, again, I want to uh, say thank you to all our patrons who made it possible. And I want to invite all of you out there. If you want to support the channel, if you want to see more content like this and uh, make the road to the, the infamous battle reports from the past, we're almost there. Uh, and um, we will be at the Realms of Battle in Poland, the, that bigger tournament, and we also have a streaming table. So all the battle reports are just around the corner. So if you want, if you want to support us, if you want to uh, do some do some good for hits and crits, just check out in the in the description. You can find our Patreon, Kofi, or um, buy me a coffee, whatever you like, uh, to bring those cool projects alive, like the playmats with uh, the we we did with Playmats EU with all the um, tokens, the the uh, deployment zones, and the objective markers, and it's all in there. Setup goes well, and it has a place for everything on the on the on the table. So just just a great product, and we're really proud of it. All right, so there's nothing more to say than until we meet again. Roll those crits, guys. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.